VFX Bro here on this beautiful Monday morning, and we're going to get right into it here. Last week we released a tutorial on the 3D object motion tracking in the Office Warfare video, and got a lot of requests for the effect that we see at the end where Zack is sliding in slow-mo, and we see this sort of shockwave effect come off of his gun as he shoots the bullets. So we're going to run through this really quick. We're going to do this all in After Effects. Now we're just going to bring in our shot here right into a new composition. During these parts we wanted to add a nice ripple effect where we see kind of the air shockwave. So what we did for this, um, I messed around with a lot of tutorials, did a lot of research online and couldn't find anything that I really wanted. So it was really like just a lot of experimentation. So like I always say, don't be afraid to experiment and uh, you'll never know what you can come up with. So we're gonna go composition, um, new composition. We're gonna make it 400 by 400, hit okay. We're gonna hit command Y, our key, our shortcut to make a new solid. With that solid selected, we're gonna make a new mask with our circle here. If you don't have that circle at the, the top left pulled up, hit Q, cycle through them until you get the circle. With our solid selected, we're gonna go ahead and make a mask here, hit shift so we can get a nice perfect circle. And then we're going to select our mask here, hit Command C, select our solid, and hit Command V. So we have two masks that are the exact same size. We're going to subtract the second, everything's going to disappear. We're going to go down here to our expansion, and we're going to bring that down to just about negative 80 right there. Um, we're going to hit a keyframe for that. Now we're going to go to our top mask, and we're going to select a uh, keyframe for this here. We're going to drag that out to probably right around 25, 23. And now we're going to uh, subtract this right about there. And uh, then we're going to go to the end here. We can see that our outer layer is, has expanded to the end at this point in the timeline. And we're going to go to our inner circle and expand that out as well. So now if we scroll, th scrub through this, we've got a nice kind of uh, circle that is enlarging here. And uh, one other thing we're going to do is we're going to change our feather. So with both of these lay well, with both of these masks selected, we're going to keyframe our feather right here. So we've got that keyframed, and we're going to bring up that feather quite a bit. Let's go ahead and change this to our black so we can see what's going on a little bit better. And uh, right about there looks good. And then we're going to go to the beginning, and you can see that mask is way too big to uh, really see anything at the beginning. So right about there looks good as well. So now we have that expanding out, very nice. Um, what we're gonna do now is add some noise to this. So we're gonna go over here into our fractal noise. We're gonna add that to this layer right here. We've got a nice fractal noise. Um, don't worry about the details too much. I kind of brought up the contrast just a tad. And um, we can also, what we're gonna do is animate the evolution. So there are some expressions for this, but the easiest way is just to uh, select this keyframe, sorry. And uh, we're gonna just select right here, keyframe that, we're gonna go to the end and just hit one. So that we've got a nice animation as we scroll through. We can see that the uh, evolution is making the uh, noise kind of move around a little bit. If you see that change there, that's what that means. So now we're gonna go ahead and move on. We've got that taken care of. Um, we're going to add the um, turbulent displacement. So go ahead to your effects bin. If you don't have this pulled up here, this workspace button right here, nice little tip here is we can actually switch to any sort of work view. So you could be in standard right now, which would be this, in which case you'd have to click on this for effects, or we can just select our effects here and uh, that helps out. So we're gonna go to turbulent displace, add that to this and we can see that we have a nice kind of um, distortion to that and uh, we're going to want to actually animate this a little bit. So again, we're going to go to the beginning, we're going to set a keyframe, and then we're going to go to the end here and change this to one. And uh, see, that is very nice displacement there. Again, we're only going to be seeing the first part right here. Um, this uh, displacement is a little bit too big. We want a little bit more detail, so we're going to bring our size down, actually. So right about there looks good. Much better. And uh, yeah, that should do it. So we have this now selected, and we can go over here and change this to our, uh, we'll call this the shock wave map. Uh, most of you who were commenting in the last video asked for the shock wave 
effect. So we're just going to go ahead and call it that. Um, so we've got that there. We're going to go back to um, our original shot here. And we're just going to drag that in. And uh, we've got the shockwave effect here. Okay, so we're going to bring this on top. And uh, there we have the shockwave effect um, growing out. What we're going to do now is um, we are actually going to um, make this into a guide layer. So you'll see why we do this later on. But basically what we're going to do here is have the shockwave come out right when he shoots. So right after he shoots, which is right there, would be this moment. So we can actually make this a slight tad bit bigger. And uh, right after that. So we're going to take this, drag it. Um, let's, so let's First let's test the speed here. So after it shoots out, let's see. That's probably about the right speed for it to come out. We might want to make it a little bit faster as far as how quickly the shock wave will enlarge and eventually dissipate. So we're going to go back to our mask settings and uh, we can probably bring it down by um, maybe 25%. Uh, so we're going to select these here and we're going to drag them all right there. So now it just gets bigger quicker, which is great. So now it shoots out. We've got that coming out. Perfect. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we've got that there we are going to um, add a uh, we're gonna go ahead and pre-compose this so that we can add our mask to the shot um, so command shift C pre-composes that and uh, now we've got this guy right here since it was just a guide later guide layer um, the background disappears which is great and uh, we're going to add a mask around this. So let's go ahead and just bring out this mask. Hold shift to make a perfect circle. And hit V to switch it. We're going to center it in on this here. And now what we're going to do is hit M. And we're going to feather this out. So now as it gets bigger, it starts to slowly disappear. Perfect. So we've got that disappearing. Looks very nice. And uh, we can actually shrink this down a little bit because we've got a little bit got a, got a little bit of debris here on the edges. There we go. And uh, we'll even feather this out a little bit more here. And uh, that's pretty good. We'll actually bring this down even more so that it disappears more quickly. There we go. So we've got the nice shockwave effect, comes out, and bam, it's gone. Now that we have that, we are going to, um, we're going to grab this shot here. This is the composition that we used. And we're going to bring it into a new composition here. And we're going to drag this down there. And uh, now if we go over, bam, there is our shockwave effect. Just kidding. We're going to go ahead and add a displacement map. And we're going to go displace map. We're going to we're going to add that onto our bottom layer here, and we're going to change this so that it's reading the top layer. We can go ahead and rename this really quick, just so that we know. We're going to call this displacement map. So now we see here that it's selected to the first layer. We're going to change this to the lightness, and also change the um, a vertical to lightness. And we're going to go ahead and distort this probably about 30 to 40 pixels. Obviously this will vary depending on the resolution of the um, shot that you're using initially. But we've got that there. And if we turn this off completely, we can see that, bam, there it is. The nice effect. And uh, what we can also do is change the opacity of this guy right here. If you want to have a little bit of residue, um, it almost looks like a little bit of smoke, sort of. We can, for the for the shot, actually, we used about 4% opacity so that it kind of added to it. And uh, there you have it. There, That is the shockwave effect. Um, obviously, the um, magnitude that 
um, we see the shockwave that can be changed by increasing the amount of pixels that it displaces. Additionally, we can also make this guy bigger here um, by just going into this shot right here and just making it bigger that way. So that is always an option. Um, and yeah, so uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave comments. Love to get feedback. Uh, if you guys have any other tutorials you'd like to see, let me know. Uh, this has been VFX Bro with a tutorial on the shockwave effect in After Effects.